Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Healthy Hotline. I'm Robbie Bessner, I'm the device developer of Therasage and also the co-founder. And today, I mean, besides being one of my favorite people on the entire planet, uh, I'd like to introduce you or reintroduce you to Gabby Picciarelli. And she's just a very special person. Um, she's a practitioner. She's got multiple skill sets, speaks like, I think five languages, probably 10 by now. Uh, <laughs> and she's just awesome. She does a lot of her therapy through, you know, her intuition and she's sort of an empath in a lot of ways in understanding the way the body works. Uh, she has an incredible skill set, which she's going to tell us about a little bit today. But, you know, um, today's interview and discussion is really speaking to the Lyme community and everybody out there, you know, you, it's just a full gambit of things to be going on with you as the Lyme patient or the person that has the Lyme disease or, and even the surrounding families, the people that are supporting you in your own health journey. You can find Gabby, by the way, two ways. Uh, her website's amazing and she's just so stylish and everything. She's set with intention and in everything she does, but you can contact her at www.rpt, the letters rpt.health, or you can email her if you want at Gabby, G-A-B-Y, at rpt.health, either way. So aside from finding her through Healthy Hotline, by all means, reach out to her, get signed up, understand what she's about. She's got multiple skills that she will help you on so many ways. So she's someone that you I hold very dear to my heart. So Gabby, a Lyme patient, they could be bedridden, they could have chronic Lyme, they could have had it for 20 years, they could be super symptomatic and have an episode and be in bed for weeks on end, honestly. And or they could have Lyme and it could be sort of like they have episodes, but they're sort of managing their lives. It's sort of the full range. So tell us a little bit about you, your background, the kinds of things you'd love to share with the Lyme community that will be watching this, this, this episode that, you, that they can do tomorrow that's valuable to them. I know I'm giving you a compounded question, but take the mic, get with it, and let's see, let's see what we can learn together. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to spend time with you, whether in person or through these interviews where we're sharing our experiences, our knowledge, and our love for people in need. And I just want to honor you for all your work that you've done for so many people, including myself. Um, as you see right behind me here is my sauna, which I talk about every single day because it literally has changed. It has changed my life and my health. And so I'm just so grateful to you and Therasage for creating such incredible tools to help us. So, um, I am, the short answer is I am Gabby Picciarelli. I'm a therapist, that's the real short answer. But the real answer is that I, my mission is to add more life into people's years and more years to their life. And I wanna do that with whatever knowledge, intuition, messages, help that I can provide information. And Today, we we're, we're happen to be speaking about foot reflexology, um, and, we, and I want to focus on that because, number one, I, my background is that I, I was never, you know, I never aspired to be a foot reflexologist when I was little. This came about out of a need to help myself, actually. Um, when I was 21 years old, I was really ill, and, and nobody could figure out really what it was that was the root cause of this until I came across an incredible reflexologist by the name of Wanda Bratko. Um, she was in Toronto at the time from Poland though. And I had this incredible synchronicity, this moment that I could have been in her hands, in her office, in her chair. And she turned my life around in so many ways. I mean, first of all, it was helped by her healing hands through, through foot reflexology. But also later on, as my health regained and I gained back my vitality, I decided that this is, this is my mission. This is my life. And I need to move forward spreading this message, how foot reflexology changed my life, my career, the trajectory of my entire being. So 
Um, that's just a little brief background on how I even got into this incredible practice of, of reflexology and how I've now, 13 years later, I've built um, RPT Health, which stands for Regenerative Pathway Therapy. And it is a combination of all the things that I did, number one, to help myself, but also all the people, all the experiences, all the therapies that I have experienced along this journey to better health for myself. And, and I've put it together in a modality that I think is comprehensive. It doesn't just include the physical body, it's our environment, it's our connections, it's our mental state, it's our connection with the universe, God, our higher self, whatever, whatever it is that you call it. Um, and it's this just all encompassing modality and method that I, I feel helped me. I mean, I know it helped me tremendously and I'm on a mission to spread this to others. So um, today, if we're going to be speaking about foot reflexology, I, I'm so passionate about this because this is where I started. And really, um, you know, I think if I hadn't had the experience that I did, um, it'd be hard for me to really um, spread the message that it turned my life around, my health around. And just from, if you break it down simply, just from touching the foot in a certain way, how it can affect your body and how it can change the energetic state of your body. Um, I later learned that, well, it's not just on the feet. We can do reflexology on the hands. We can do it on the ears. We can also help ourselves on our face. And, um, and so I've incorporated all of that into my practice as well. But um, today we can focus on perhaps the feet and the ears um, because I feel that if you are in various states, stages of wherever you are along your health journey, if you're bedridden, or if you have a little bit of energy and you can devote that time um, and your healing hands to help yourself, it, it would require a different level of energy. And so I want to sort of address the whole gamut. And um, why don't we start with perhaps the foot? Um, if you have you know, access to your feet, or if you have the energy and you're able to do this, um, it would, in my opinion, be the greatest, the greatest thing that you could do for yourself and your energy and your health and understanding that the body, the micro is in your foot is the start of all of this. So if you took, let's say a photo of your actual physical body and you shrunk it down, and you imposed it on the bottom of your feet, that would give you a guide as to where each organ, where each gland, where each part of the body lies. And that's sort of the easiest and the best way to understand the, um, the map of the foot. Um, and the left side corresponds with everything that's physically on the left side of your body. And the right foot is everything that physically sits on the right side of your body you put them together and you have the whole. So um, if we're going to start, let's say I'm going to use my little, my little foot model here, because this is going to be yeah, easy I for me that. to. I love that. <laughs> that um, actually, that's a great way to start. And I just, for people that just tuned in, you know, we're talking to Gabby Picciarelli and she was just talking about like her integrated approach to basically tuning the body up and using, today we're gonna to learn simple methods just by using the reflexology points on your foot, which correlate to each of your organs and bodily processes. And so what's super cool about this is that she's gonna teach us, you're gonna teach us, you know, what spots mean correlate to what, and we can show a little graph of this later on that you provided us, which I think is amazing. Um, and then, you know, all of us at home, like when we're not, when we're feeling off or we're feeling pain in a certain area, you can go right to that spot on your foot or your hand or your ears, as you mentioned, and then you can sort of help self-help yourself. You don't need to go out to the doctor. You can do it while you're resting or while you're in bed or, you know, doing whatever you into working into your daily routine. So show me your foot. So here it is. Here's okay. my little model of my foot. And, um, just before we start with that, I just want to also say that if you don't have much strength in your hands, perhaps your hands are 
um, weakened by by your state or, or you just simply don't have the strength yet because this takes very different muscles sort of to work with your fingers and your hands. And I just want to offer another solution. And this has worked for me really well is I have all sorts of stones around that I collect and I buy wherever I am in the world. And they, you know, something that that sort of resonates with you that you're drawn to. If you love, for example, rose quartz or any other stone that you might have, or you can go out and buy, um, then I would suggest you can even use this for now just to kind of work, start working with your hands and really get the sense of, of, of um, touch, the developing the, the areas, the senses of touch. So um, I just wanted to offer that because it will come, it will come into handy and some it come handy into some spots and I'm going to talk about it later, but I just wanted to mention it's that. A great before idea. I you know, and the stones that you choose, they, they all have different energies also like exactly. shungite and jade stone and rose quartz. And so you can actually use the frequencies of the stones in yes. conjunction with the points that you're, that you're grabbing exactly. at the same time. What a so that's that's one thing and before you actually start on working on yourself i just want you to take a minute right now and just look around the space that you're in the room that you're in the chair that you're in i want you to notice how you feel in your space right now and before i begin any session i intuitively intentionally set the mood for what it is that I'm about to do. So I set the energy for how I want the following 20 minutes or 30 minutes that I will be working on someone or more. How, how do I want the area to feel, the energy of the room? If there's something that you love, for example, fresh plants, flowers, um, life force that brings you, that gives you that sense of, of living, of life, then surround yourself with that. If there's something the opposite that doesn't quite make you feel right, then move it away or get rid of it and, and set the tone for where it is that you're going to be healing yourself. Remember, I just want to share that you cannot heal in the same environment that you got sick in. You have to make the environment conducive to your healing. So whether it's surrounding yourself with those things or just tidying it up, decluttering it, maybe making it fresher, opening the windows, getting some fresh air if you can. And those are all really easy things that you can do to, to set the tone and the mood. The other thing is talk, speaking about frequency is that I always play um, music that I select based on what I feel would be best for that scenario. And it could be different frequency of music, for example, 432 hertz, if that's um, something that you love. Just explore this idea of, of sound as a tool to also heal you because it will also set the mood and the tone and the energy for the room. So I just wanted to offer those two little um, tips before we begin. We all have favorite songs we like and your head and your mind and your memory goes right there. And so really we're tuning our hearts, our brains and our bodies up at the same time. And, exactly. and mostly I loved what you said about, you know, oftentimes, you know, when you're so sick and you're in bed, like you don't feel good. And there's a little bit of that negative energy around there, around you in the room and just shifting, being conscious to shift that energy a little bit can make all the difference in just setting a nice, healthy platform, creating a new, fresh page and just Absolutely. kind of moving forward in a positive way, which mm -hmm. just, you know, Kind of, these are all subtle energies, by the way, but when you do a little this, a little that, a little this, a little that, all of a sudden, you got a really good platform. These are things you can do tomorrow. Actually, you can do as soon as you get off this episode. And just right now. Make a difference. <laughs> Try it out. I mean, there's no better time than now, right? So, Absolutely. Okay, keep going, because I'm just recording all these tips, and I can't wait to list them. <laughs> you know, after we're all done so people can kind of reflect on this episode and, uh, and then look you up afterwards to learn more. So keep going. Thank you. So the last thing is that also, um, why not engage the scent of your smell? So right now, before we started this conversation together, I, I did this exact exercise. I set this energy for this room so that 
I could be of the highest service that I could, the highest vibrational, um, my surroundings would have this high frequency and high vibration. And I also just um, allowed the, um, the Therisage air diffuser to surround the space with smell. And I used a certain smell that I love that reminds me of a garden that reminds me of being outside that gives me vitality it gives me life it makes me feel alive so um i just wanted to also add that little piece that smell is also very important so if there's a certain you know if it's lavender or something that you that you love then why not surround yourself with that so let's move on to the foot then so if you are in a position that you can um have access to your foot why don't we start with the very top, which is the most important, in my opinion, area that needs um, stimulation, that needs the work, and that is the toes and the base of the toes. So when I refer to the toes, I'm talking about literally every single little part of the entire toe. And it's important that you don't miss this base of the toes on the front and on the back underneath here. And what this refers to is the head, the head and the neck. Um, the most amount of lymphatic glands actually reside in the areas of our upper thoracic area. So that would be our throat and our bronchial areas in order to protect us from inhaling um, toxicity, et cetera. And so most times when there is an, um, an opportunity to release the lymphatic system, it will start with this area here of the toes, the base of the toes, specifically in between the toes. Now, if you just touch your, your, your feet right now or your hands, if you, if you have access to your hands, this will work equally well with the hands. I just want you to pay attention to the temperature of your hands and your feet and use the palm of your hand in order to assess where it is that it's a little bit cooler or warmer or maybe it's a little bit um, cold and clammy and, and it doesn't feel um, too comfortable, just pay attention, do a little scan as to where it is that you feel and just run the palm of your hand across all the areas and just for a second, take note of where it is that it's cold. Now, I would recommend that you write this down because you can track your progress through this. I did this when I was going through my health journey. And it was amazing to, to see that six months prior or four months prior, you know, my, my whole foot, the entire foot was freezing all the time. And that wow. sort of indicate, yeah. And that sort of indicates some abnormality. It shouldn't be cold all the time. Now, right. if it, I love, I love journaling. I mean, that's sort of cool for in general, like many of the Lyme mm -hmm. patients and, and customers we talk to, we, we often have them journal because the progress of their, you know, as they're moving back to health, right? Um, some of these systems are tuning up very subtly. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it like, just like you're saying, you may start off the beginning of the month maybe you're feeling cold spots or hot spots mm -hmm. or areas that are more sensitive, right? And then you look at your journal at the end of the month and you right away you notice that some of those things that you had in the beginning of the month have now shifted. Maybe they've gone away completely. Exactly. And so where before you go, God, there's no way I'm ever going to get out of this rabbit hole I'm in with this Lyme challenge and the toe infections and now I've got mold or whatever's going on, you actually can really track these subtle ed, um these subtle changes right uh with the uh with your journal and then you can look back and go whoa wait a minute i have made some progress and then you know you tune this up and you tune that up and before you know it like now you're having more good days than bad days and you're back on your feet totally but i know we're talking about feet so no pun intended but <laughs> keep going keep going and the other thing is too, just to add to that is that we forget how far we've come. You know, you might look back a couple months from now and say, wow, I, I didn't, I don't even remember that that was something that I was going through. Like sometimes right. I'll read back a journal from a few years ago and I can't believe that those are the things that I was feeling at that time. You forget, 
And so it's yeah, important love, to give your, that. right. And it's important to also give your body and give yourself the credit and the merit and the love and, and recognize how far you've come. And you can only do that if you have it written down and you can remind yourself really. So yes, journaling yeah. is really important. So yeah, most of uh, us, most of us out there that have chronic challenges, you're just sick of being sick, you know, that mm -hmm. you're looking for some magic bullet or pill that you can take that just going to shift you immediately. But generally you get sick on a cell level and you also heal on a cell level. And so what you're talking about is walking people off that cliff or down the mountain and it's done slowly. The healthy way is slow and steady. And that's mm -hmm. going to be bringing you into subtle changes and tracking those cell changes. It makes all the difference. And just giving you hope to know that you're just progressing towards that state of good health again. Absolutely. And, and since we're on this topic, one, one other thing is um, you have to be also very clear on how you want to feel because it's easy to know what you don't want. But what about if you ask yourself, what do I want? How do I want to feel? What does my life look like when I am healthy as if it's already happened? And having that, that picture and that um, idea and the feeling and you embrace it with every single cell of your body that you know you're gonna get better. Your body has the ability. It is designed in a way that it is absolutely looking for homeostasis. It's looking for health. We must just provide the environment, the tools, the concepts, the ideas to allow it to, to move in that direction. It does need sometimes some assistance. And, and if you give it that, you'd be so, I mean, you'd be shocked at what the human body can do in, in a short period of time as well. But being clear you know, on what it looks like is, is almost the first step. Yeah, that's, that's sometimes the hardest step because when you're not feeling well, it's hard to think about what it would be like to feel okay and that you have the power to make that change. But oftentimes when I think about this, I kind of think that, that what happens is when you have a chronic challenge, it's like your body lost its GPS, like its guidance mm -hmm. system. And all you need to do is give it some guidance, give it that direction, mm -hmm. give it the vision. And exactly. then, then all of a sudden the GPS starts getting on track. Oh yeah, that's where you want me to go. And then because your mind and your cells actually have memory, you've heard of muscle memory, but every mm -hmm. cell in your body has a memory and has mm -hmm. a function and knows how to function optimally. But when it kind of forgets its way, mm -hmm. uh, it's somehow it's sort of like light switches were turned off. And what you're showing us is how to turn those light switches on by visualizing, changing the atmosphere in your room, creating a good platform, and just thinking about the, what your life would be like, what the vision is. And then in a sense, everything tunes up and you follow that course almost um, organically mm -hmm. to get to the goal. And it's not a question of whether you will, it's just how soon it's gonna happen. Exactly, right? exactly. So, now with that vision in mind and all of the things in place let's let's get to work now we've got to put in a little bit of our of our energy to get there okay. so show I us the point to, show us the point yeah, I, I want you to focus on for for today we're going to focus on the toes they are so important right i mentioned it's the head it's the throat and that lymphatic system that is that protects us and so what i want you to to focus on is what foot feels a little bit colder than the other and write it down. And now a very simple technique you're gonna use with your thumb is you're gonna do like almost like a wiggling walking motion along the toes. So you're gonna start from the base, right? And you're gonna use the other, the, the index finger. So you point your finger as leverage, right? So you leverage the toe and you basically push your thumb into every little, spot of every single toe starting from the base of the toe though don't miss that joint because that's again that lymphatic system the throat um, and so what I want you to do is now go up just to keep it simple in a line in a really straight line as if you want to create 
different zones on those yes on those toes even on the on the fingers if you do it on your fingers it's the same idea so i'm going to still use my index finger as leverage and i'm basically moving up my finger and I'm almost squeezing it and feeling if there's something that I can feel underneath my thumb. Do you feel a little bit of goop? Do you feel a little bit of um, hardness? Maybe you feel, wow, something is moving under there. What could that be? Well, if, if it is something along those lines, what I want you to do is go back and work that area. I am willing to bet that that area, wherever you feel some kind of calcification or sediment underneath your thumb, underneath your fingers as you're massaging, is the area that's also cold or cooler than the other parts of your, of your toes or your, your foot, for example. And so what you want to do is you want to work that out. Just work it out. And don't worry if you, in reflexology, this is the be beautiful thing is that you really can't do anything wrong. There are no really um, contraindications or anything that could go wrong by doing this type of work. It's so non-invasive. It's so gentle yet so effective. So I just want you to keep that in mind as well, that nothing can go wrong. And so as you're working your toes, pay attention to the, what the, what the coloring, how, how it's changing, what the temperature is, how the how it changes as you work your toes. If you're experiencing, um, let's say a headache or a migraine, I want you to pay close, close attention to the webbing of your toes. And what you can actually do in that part of the, of the, of the foot is just gently squeeze it and hold it for five seconds. And just do it as much as your body can bear. It doesn't have to be totally unbearable, but you want to feel that there is something that you are activating in those spots. And you're going to do it for every single, um, in between every single toe on both sides okay. of, of, on both feet. And that gives instant, an instant, um, rush of energy and circulation to the back of your neck and to your, um, this upper thoracic area. What that does is it relieves some of the pressure from your head. And so if that gave you a bit of relief, and if it also changed the temperature of your toes, which it should, if you do it two to three times on both feet, you should feel already a difference in your head, but also in the temperature of your toes. That gives you an indication right away that circulation has been restored. Whoa. And so keep, keep doing that. And you can do it also on your hand. It's the yeah. same. Do you, um, do you recommend using some kind of oils, like essential oils or any kind of oil along with it so you're not just getting the benefit of the manipulation and touching those points? But Absolutely. Also the, so which kind of ones would you recommend that people can get that are easy, so, that you know have been real effective? So my favorite, which I've been using since the day I started um, helping myself, treating myself, but also um, treating others is castor oil. And oh, okay. there is, I mean, studies from many, many years ago written by Edward Case, for example, that you can read how he used castor oil as his remedy for almost anything. Um, I recommend that you do a little bit of research on him and just read how he used such a simple oil, but such an incredibly effective oil to, to help his patients. And that is what I have always used. And I just find that um, the viscosity of the oil and the way it feels on my hands when I massage other people, it just, it, there's something so special about castor oil and, and I'm drawn to it. And so I, I, you know, I've tried to use other oils. If you don't have castor oil right now, you can also, an alternative would be, you know, almond oil, jojoba oil, so in some cases where I've been in situations where I wanted to help somebody immediately and there was nothing else but olive oil to, you know, from the kitchen, we used some olive oil. It doesn't matter. Right. We've got to make do with what we have. It's not, you know, when you have your, your, your own two hands, this is where the, the magic happens is, is the energy that you put into the work that you're doing. The oil just helps along. Of course, it adds that extra element of healing. But if you're in a situation that you don't have it, and you can't get it. It's okay. <laughs> you can use the olive oil even from the kitchen. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's great. Cool. You know, um, 
I was just thinking while you were talking about like it's a bonding experience. Like you, here you're teaching us how we can give ourselves self-help and love. But you can also recruit like, you know, your partner and your mm-hmm. friend to come in, share the experience with. You sit, you sit, you kind of chat and get caught up on all the gossip of the neighborhood while mm-hmm. they're working your feet. They get to learn something. You share those energies. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I love castor oil. Well, basically, I, the or, if you can get the organic form of anyone, the vibrate, like the castor oil, then you're going to get something that's more pure and also have a higher vibration, which mm-hmm. is going to work with your body a, a little bit better. So if you have the ability to, and the financial whereabouts to get organic, anything, organic oils in this reference, that would be preferable. And then using that oil, you know, using your own techniques and or teaching your partner, like how to help you. And I mean, I've been massaging Melody's feet, my wife's for 40 years, you know? Uh, So we just do it, that's our routine every night. And so I calm her down, we have busy days and full days. And it's not like she's standing on her feet all day, but just Mm -hmm. working her, the zones of her feet, really okay. kind of calm her down and gets so moves her from an anxious or a sympathetic state to parasympathetic it gets her ready for bed it gets her mind in a different zone completely mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um you know these are things that we can all do they they just take minutes and it will shift your you know like your whole health experience to bring it to a much much higher level Definitely. Awesome. And since you mentioned zones, I just want to, um, I just want to mention that um, Fitzgerald was, he's, he's called the father of reflexology. And he, um, you know, writ, wrote a book about the zones of the body and how it relates to the zones of the feet. And so in order for it to be easier to understand, because reflexology, believe it or not, it's such a science, but yet it's such an art because there is, there are so many points. I mean, on the, every single square inch of your skin contains endless amounts of nerve endings. And essentially that's what you're doing is that you're stimulating these nerve endings on your extremities. And this is why you can do it on your feet, on your hands, your ears, your face. But Fitzgerald um, wrote an incredible um, book about the zones. And so I just want to mention that as you're, maybe this is new to you, or if you already know about reflexology, but in order to locate an area of your body on the foot, the easiest way to do it is imagine that you've, like I mentioned before, you've taken a photo, you've shrunk it, and now you've put it on your foot. So I'm going to just hold this like this, because this will be the left side of my body. But Another way to kind of um, help you find the area that perhaps hurts or needs, you know, energy stimulation circulation is to cut the foot almost in zones. So as you, as you look at the bottom of your foot, and as you look at your body, this is essentially the same. So I'm holding it in the middle of my body, because this is where the foot represents the middle of my body, the left side of my body. So if I had, for example, a pain in my shoulder or close to my clavicle bone, somewhere around this area, either front or back, the way to find it is to literally um, relate the foot to, to my body. So if I know that my, my toes are, is my head, the base of my neck is in the base of my toes. If I'm having a pain, let's say in my shoulder blade, it's, it's going to be on the medial side. So let's say on the outer side here, let's Let's go underneath the um, your, your pinky and I'm going to find that area of the foot that relates to the same zone as my shoulder. So just wow. imagine the zone of the foot and, and you can do this with your own kind of map to find it on your own on your own foot or on your sure. own head. Does that make sense? Like it's, it's oh in my, my shoulder. Therefore, it's on the outer part of my body. It has to be on the outer part of my foot. And just look around. It's going to be somewhere in the, in the vicinity of the small toe, the baby toe, somewhere around the joint. Wow. And so amazing. the other thing that is so incredible with reflexology is that there is a law of similarity. And if something I was taught this years and years ago when I first started is if something looks the same, has the same shape, 
it might be related to each other. Meaning if my hips, for example, are sore, my hip joint, let's say it's on the left side. So it's gonna be on the left foot, somewhere in the, in the bottom of my heel. So again, you can, you can think of this as your whole body. My lower extremities are going to be located in the heel of the foot, because that's the bottom of the foot. And so my hip might be sore and it might be triggering my shoulder blade. Those two joints look very similar. They move in similar ways. Therefore, with the law of similarity, why don't you look and discover what is happening in the lower part of your spine, in your hip as well, if you have a, a sore shoulder and work them together, work them so that the whole zone, that whole zone, right here can be relieved you know i love what you're saying because you don't it's you don't need a map you don't need a textbook you don't need gray's anatomy you don't need to be a <laughs> physiologist you can just practice on yourself and then you know where you're hurting so right. once you know that part then you can just find the designated spot pull around you can't make a mistake because even if you aren't exactly on the point, but you're moving close to the point, mm -hmm. it still will give support and blood and energy to That's the right. area. And then you can work right up to the point. And then you can discover for yourself the things that work exactly. and the things that aren't. And many of the live guys out there, I mean, sometimes they've got a pain in the shoulder. Sometimes it's over here the next day, it kind of moves mm -hmm. around. So it's tricky like that. Mm -hmm. So you just, now you've got a way that you can address it exactly at the time when you're in the mm -hmm. moment can make a difference. Wow, Gabby, this is so important. And the other thing is too, don't be scared to, to manipulate your foot in a gentle way. Like, don't be scared to, I showed you just one technique with the thumb wiggle, but you can use literally any, you know, a technique that works for you. So if using all, you know, 10 fingers works, and remember, it's not just the bottom of your foot, it's also the top of your foot, the side of your foot, it's the entire foot. So if it works for you to just kind of move, you know, the metatarsal bones like this, for example, that is an incredible technique to get your spine moving, for example. Don't be afraid to do something outside the box to explore and to feel your body because ultimately, once your body recognizes that help is on it on the way, which is, it, this signals to the body that something is going to shift here and it's going to be dramatic and it's going to be amazing. It will start to speak to you and you will start to develop those senses in your hands that will allow you to feel better, to feel your own body better so that you can be your own doctor. You can be your own source of healing. That's the best doctor on the planet. Okay, so we're running out of time and we could spend okay. hours together and I can't wait for the next episode. <laughs> but just to recap, we learned in the last 25 minutes or so, like the ways that we can actually help ourselves. We don't need to pay for a doctor. We can just figure out what's hurting today. We can find the correlating point on our feet. Today is about feet, but you can do hands and also there's areas in your ear that mm -hmm. correlate mm -hmm. as well. We're tapping into, it isn't a discovery from just a year ago, the, the Eastern Bloc countries, like in Asia, they've been practicing acupuncture and acupuncture for 8,000 years, non-invasive ways, just basically mm -hmm. stimulate the energy zones of your body to help tune everything up and get it all connected. Um, I love the beginning of when you were talking about the mind-body experience and setting the stage and the platform for healing. So it's not just about addressing, you know, in kind of the Western way, got a pain, I want to deal with it, take an aspirin, put a band-aid on it, get back to work. No, you're creating sort of a mood and a lifestyle and just a, a reshifting your energy and your headset. So you're creating a, you know, just a holistic healing experience, not just taking care of business at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Today's contribution, Gabby Picciarelli, was so important. You can grab her at Gabby at our rpt.health or go to her website which is www.rpt.health is my website perfect um you are one of a kind you are a jewel gabby Thank i'm so you. happy that you're in my life and in my inner circle 
thank you for your time today. Thank you for your contribution. I know everyone out there got something they can do right now. There's no excuse. The time is now. Have an awesome day. Thank and, you for uh, having me, Robbie. You. My Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait for the next time. Yes. Take care. Hey, everybody. It's Robbie Bessner. Thanks so much for joining us today. Please share this content with anyone that you think might benefit from it. And we're looking forward to having you with us tomorrow for another great interview.